this is also a great um, place for kids because there's rides here for the kids. Um, I distinctly remember this ride where the kids ride on these like little metal horses and there's just snow blasting in their face. <laughs> like it's hysterical. Hold on, hold it on, was hold fantastic. on. Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Honeymoon Travel Podcast, the podcast that talks about all things couples travel, including destinations, tips, advice, and more. I'm Kat. I'm Chris. And this is episode number 232. And things are not great, Bob. Okay. They're not. I'm sorry for your your soccer slash football loss. It's um, been a terrible week. It really has been. I can't think of a worse week from a soccer perspective. I was going to say, I can think of worse weeks. March 2020, you know. You know, at least then Harry Kane was still a Tottenham Hotspur. And at least then the U.S. women hadn't been eliminated from the World Cup. On quite possibly one of the wildest, like, PKs. Mm -hmm. That was insane, wasn't it? Yes. It was a millimeter. A millimeter. And then you have the fact that the NFL is still using literal chains to measure their, th- like, distances. Insanity. But, yeah. I've um, been seeing really funny things. Well, on the bright side, uh, Taylor Swift 1989 announced. We all knew that was coming on August 8th. Are or there 9th. any good breakup songs on Taylor Swift 1989? Ah. Uh, I mean, she's got like style. Are we out of the woods yet? Are we out of the woods yet? But now you, you're, you're, you're. Harry up. Kane is out of the woods. <laughs> he's he's gone. <laughs> um, this is the worldwide honeymoon soccer podcast. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's yeah, we've we've changed topics. Um, <laughs> okay. This has been terrible though. Okay, so I have been, like, there's been this whole like, will they, won't they, mm-hmm. for months. Okay, well, years. I mean, Harry Kane expressed his like dissatisfaction with the club years ago which i get right it has not been fun but he's also i mean he's one of our own he came up through the youth academy Mm -hmm. and i mean i get wanting to like spread your wings a little bit learn to fly one of our own came up through the youth academy what does that even mean christopher you played soccer at like five he came up through Tottenham's Youth Academy. Oh, gotcha. See, I didn't, what part of that was you were unclear? You a whole other language to me there for a minute. But this I is will... a, If you're going to have to bone up if this is the soccer <laughs> podcast now, okay? <laughs> okay, it's not. It is. Um, but it's it's funny because, um, sorry, speaking of, I mean, I guess we're talking about America. I, hold I'm... on, hold on, hold on. How is my pain funny? It's not... Can we talk about oh that? Oh my gosh, you're fine. I've been uh... listening to breakup songs for the past 30 minutes. Okay, um... Well, speaking of that and uh, Taylor Swift releasing her thing, or, I mean, her new um, Taylor's version album, um, it was funny. I saw a tweet that was like, I can thoroughly believe a football stadium, American football stadium that seats like thousands and thousands and thousands of people um, being completely full for Taylor Swift. But they were like, I can't imagine it being this full for an actual football game. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, At so this point, what is, I mean, what is the world? Okay. This is completely... that. This is the last straw for you? <laughs> you know what? It is. <laughs> okay. I've, I've done my best. I have put on a smile, you know, waved hello, really gave it the old college try. Mm-hmm. This is the final straw for me. Okay. Um, I'm disappointed that you and I don't have an alarm set for 3.15 tomorrow morning to watch the U.S. women. I'm not devastated about that. I'll be real with you. You, um, I had never seen such a bright, flowery, cheerful demeanor as this past Sunday at five o'clock in the morning oh um, when I woke up before the alarm and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a great day. And then the alarm goes off at what? Like we set it for like 4.50. Yes. And I was like, my first words out of my mouth were, do you want coffee? Um, good morning. Oh my gosh. And you were just like, <sighs> All right. Well, and we don't have that now. We anything, don't have that moment to share. Um, that's again, I'm not devastated. Um, all right. So, any highlights from your Christopher's no good, very bad week? Are you mocking me at this point? <laughs> highlights? 
Yeah. You know what the worst part? I'm going to I'm going to go back to this. No, Christopher, we we can't keep talking about soccer. This is a travel podcast. Let's move on. I'm doing my best to rebrand in 5 minutes. No. No, we are not. Um <laughs> my highlight from this week. Um I don't know. This Negroni's good. Okay. Well, there you go. Um What's your highlight? <laughs> Uh, mine has been, I've been working on France Voyager for the past week, and that's what this podcast episode is going to be relating to, France, but um, I've been working on Christmas market content, and I know that it's like August now, but people are obviously planning their trips coming up to the Christmas markets. Um, the dates Some of have us been need released. happiness. Oh my goodness. Um, so my highlight has been reminiscing about the Christmas markets um, in Strasbourg and Colmar, because that's the ones I wrote about this week, and that was a lot of fun to think about. Christmas is fun. Christmas is fun. Um, so yeah, today we're actually going to be getting into the Christmas market stuff. So if you guys are planning a trip to Colmar in France um, or thinking about going to the Christmas markets, um, well, you've you've tuned in at the right time because that's what we're talking about today, the, the Colmar Christmas market guide. So we're going to talk all about the markets, things to eat and drink, where to stay, all of that stuff. Um, I will have a blog post going up later this month about the Colmar Christmas markets on France Voyager. I will I will include it when that post goes live. But right now it is um, scheduled out for in a couple weeks from now. So be patient and I will I will put that on there. Yeah, chill. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> be patient. Will you stop it? You need to calm down. You're being You're too being loud. Too loud. <laughs> Catherine's version <laughs> no um all right well do you want to get into it you want me to talk about the Christmas markets yeah let's do it so I um I did not go on this trip mm -hmm. um I have not been to the Colmar Christmas markets yeah um I will say from my memory of the Central European Christmas markets um as well as the Belgian Christmas markets do you consider Belgium Central Europe I would say that's Western Europe I would too yeah um, I loved the Christmas markets. Mm -hmm. Okay, like this was straight up like that feeling on Christmas morning as a child of like waking up, right? And it's almost a, it's both joy, but also like a little bit of nerves, mm -hmm. right? Because you're like slowly tiptoeing out of your room, like, Maybe your siblings are up. Maybe your parents are up. Maybe whoever is up. Maybe you're the only one up. But like you're also checking for did Santa come? Mm -hmm. And just that excitement as a child, that is hard to capture on Christmas morning as an adult. Unless if you're Christopher on Sunday morning trying to watch the World Cup. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Back to soccer. Um, no, 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 no. So... <laughs> Um, the Christmas markets give you that feeling, right? It is just such a magical, magical experience. It's almost like if you could take a portal back to your childhood on Christmas morning, that is what the Christmas markets give. Um, so I am excited to hear about how the Colmar Christmas markets um, compared to some of the Central European Christmas markets. Sure, yeah. Um and they are. I mean, there's quite a few differences um, in going to some French Christmas markets compared to Central European, compared to German, compared to all the other ones that we've gone to in the past. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. my. Uh, Can we talk about, so first impressions. So you. Or you, thoughts prior. Or I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Thoughts prior. So you, you had been to the Central European Christmas markets at this point. Mm hmm How high were your expectations? Um, I would say pretty high. The only thing was a few weeks prior, I had I saw an article that was saying that um, the Christmas markets in the Alsace were no longer going to be serving like champagne and like other <laughs> typical French things. Non-starter for Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but at first I just saw that and I was like, well, what are they going to do instead? And so after reading the article, because of course the, the title's like, they're no longer serving champagne at the Christmas markets. I imagine the offense that you took to that and you're like, what am I supposed to drink? <laughs> Sparkling wine? <laughs> like, are you kidding? Okay. Champagne. I was expecting vintage champagne, and now we're not even serving champagne. Will you get out of here. Um, 
No. And then the, when I actually read the article was talking about they Champagne is obviously from the Champagne region, not from the Alsace. Um, so instead, they were going to start serving more and focus more on local products, local food from the Alsace, local drinks from the Alsace. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later when I talk about eating and drinking at the markets. But um, so I was actually at first I'd heard that. And at first I was a little discouraged by it because I was like, oh, like, you know, champagne and like oysters and different things like that would be on offer at the markets. I mean, can we all agree that when we think of Christmas, we think of two things, champagne and oysters. Or foie gras. But that's French. Those are oh French. No, no, no. I kid you not. That is the French Christmas markets. You know what I mean? Like literally the ones in Paris have champagne booths where you go and you get, they have other drinks too, but the champagne is like the main star of the show. You're talking champagne, champagne. Champagne, champagne. Um, so at first I was like, oh, what are they going to be serving instead? And then it just talked about how they wanted to do more, um, local Alsatian things. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm really interested to see that because they're trying to get away from like, I, I have noticed that some of the Christmas markets, especially the really big ones we've been to in the past, have some like stuff that's like manufactured, like not even made locally. And it's just like, they're, yeah. ju- it's kind of like junk a little bit. I mean, there's some local handcrafted stands too, but there's also some that are like, they're selling the same things and it's, it's all like not made from that area. So I will say something about that. Like when we went to the Central European ones, um, and when we're talking Central European, we're talking Hungary, Slovakia, Austria, and um, Chechia. Mm -hmm. There were like some repeats there, Mm -hmm. right? Where you're like, you know that this isn't local. You know it's just a stand. You know that you are capitalizing upon like my childhood dreams. Mm Mm-hmm. And here we are. Um, yeah, I mean, not to say that they don't have some mass-produced things. I will say that you turned on the bottom of the uh, the Colmar Christmas Market mug. Um, it does say "Made in China" on it. Um, I mean, you're you're getting the mug because it says Colmar Christmas Market on it. But you go to stands, and it has locally made foods and local wineries and breweries and things yeah. like that there and then some local products as well so that's cool but that's I'd heard of that before so I was like okay they're gonna be focused more on local stuff which is great um Colmar in general is beautiful there's the the Lange River in the middle of it with beautiful canals in the Petite, Petite Venice area can you give us just like a geographical like you're looking at France and where is Colmar? Oh, sorry. So Colmar is actually in the, so the Grand East or Grand Est region of France. God, dropping that French. Um, it is along the border of, with Germany. Okay. Um, that region is. And so you've got Strasbourg kind of over there and then you go a little south and you've got Colmar. Um, so that area is sort of near Switzerland a little bit, but mostly on the border with Germany. Um, Eastern France. Eastern France. Okay. So Northeastern kind of. France okay, is where you're going to find uh, the, Alsa- the Alsace. Yes. Um, and the Alsace actually was kind of a contested piece of land. It was an area that was German at one point, French at one point, kind of back and forth quite a bit before it is now officially French. So there's a huge German influence here, which is why some of the Christmas markets here date back to the Middle Ages, um, especially Strasbourg. It's known as the capital of Christmas. It has origins dating back to 1570. Um, it is that one is of the, wild. Yeah, it is the oldest Christmas market in France, and it's one of the oldest in, in Europe. I want to say there's like, is it Nuremberg or somewhere in Germany it has the oldest. Um, but yeah, so a huge German influence there, but there's still definitely uniquely French things um, in the Alsace as well. But Sweet. anyway, thoughts prior just to wrap up. I knew there was a beautiful river in the city with beautiful half-timbered houses, um, cute markets. And then I also kind of figured that it was going to be pretty crowded and popular because... The Christmas markets are very popular these days uh, to go to and visit. So I was a little nervous about how crowded it would be and like, you know, is it going to be fun if it's too crowded and that sort of thing. So those are my thoughts prior. Okay. Do you hear that, Harry Kane? It could be be too crowded. He's not moving to the Alsace. (laughs) It could be too crowded. (laughs) Okay. If Harry Kane even listened to this podcast, (laughs) that would uh, be... we're We've far DM'd more about successful. It. We've DM'd about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, first impressions. Um, it was actually great to see a lot of local stuff, um, especially food and drink available as well, and like beautiful handcrafted items, which was really fun. Um, like I said, it is uniquely French in the fact that you can go to stands that sell pate and foie gras. 
So your body that is wild. Like that is a very French thing. Well, I feel like a, it's kind of a French tradition or a French Christmassy thing to drink sort of champagne or sparkling wine and have like foie gras. And stuff. So I will say, like so as that's an like American, part of it that's not American at all. Yeah, right. Like as an American, like the fact that you could walk up to a stand, right? Like if I am going to equate the Christmas markets to something here, mm-hmm. it's almost like a fair, like the county fair, right? Where like a yeah. bunch of like local stands slash like a traveling group yeah. is going to set up shop. Could you imagine foie gras instead of like fried corn dogs with cotton candy around it? Hey, those are nice too. I mean, I'm not saying that they're yeah, bad. They're just different. They're just different. Um, I was actually really impressed by the amount of food and drink stands too. Like you have local brewers who have you know, they have beer for sale that you can. That's either, awesome. Yeah. You have local vineyards with wine for sale. So it's very unique in that regard because all the other Christmas markets we'd ever been to mostly sold like they do have beer and wine and stuff, but it's not. It's mostly like at the drink. They have like the big bar booth that has like the mold wine and like, you know, coffee and like all these other beverages that you can have versus this is like actual vineyards are being like, here, would you like to purchase bottles of wine or have a glass of wine yes or sample um so that was really really cool um they are really cute the markets are and it's really not as busy as you think we went on a friday and saturday to colmar um saturday we used as a day to explore other smaller markets which i'll talk about later but um really during the day on friday it wasn't crowded at all it did get a little crowded during the evenings but it really wasn't but we went earlier in the season, so I guess that helps. But it really wasn't that bad. Yeah, because I remember seeing, like, I'm a part of this Facebook group um, about, like, Christmas markets and stuff. Um, and I saw a lot of people talking about Strasburg and Colmar being so crowded that you can't barely move and things like that. And I did not necessarily have that experience. That's um, good. Yeah, like, but we also went earlier in the season and more so during the week. It was crowded at night on Friday night, but it wasn't, like that crowded i don't know okay yeah yeah suck it up it was still crowded but not as bad (laughs) as like one of the other markets i went to later on okay um yeah so those are my first impressions very cute and charming great local stuff pate and foie gras and a lot of food and drink can i can i just paint a picture here (laughs) my christmas market experience was not foie gras (laughs) champagne and what was the other one oysters yeah, you can get oysters. It's, well, and yeah. in Paris, it had more of that. Yeah. Those three things were not on my Christmas market experience. Yeah. Um, so very different. It's very uniquely French in that way. Um, but as far as where to stay and how to get there and when to visit. Um, so getting there, it's only a 30-minute train from Strasbourg. Strasbourg has um, direct trains from Paris. It also has its own airport. Um, we ended up flying into Paris, staying a couple days in Paris. Then we went to Strasbourg and then took the train to Colmar So, uh, for a few days. And then um, as far as where to stay, we stayed at Hotel Turenne, which was honestly like a block or two away from the, the canals in the Petite Venice area or Venice. Um, so close to the Christmas markets. We could walk everywhere. It was lovely. Um, some other great hotel ideas um, include the Hotel Colom- Colombier Suites or Colombier Suites. Um, as well as La Maison des Têtes, which is in a historic building uh, with a Michelin star restaurant. Um, so if you're looking for luxury, that's an option as well. Just one? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I mean. <laughs> the fact that it's a this small town has, I don't know. But anyway, as far as when to go. And they still haven't served champagne at these markets? <laughs> Um, anyway, as far as when to go, the dates for this year, if you're planning to go this year, is November 23rd through December 29th of 2023. And the hours are Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the only exception to that is um, the gourmet market is open until 9 p.m. every day. So that is, I'll get into that, but that's a whole other market just about food. Can I interject here real quick? Yes. If you are thinking about it, just go, right? Like it is not an experience that you are going to be disappointed with. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not been to the Colmar Christmas markets, but the the Christmas markets in general are so amazing mm-hmm. that it is impossible, impossible to be disappointed with it. Yes. It really is. 
Yeah. And and even to continue on, sorry about the hours. Um, they are open Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and the day after Christmas. Um, their hours are a little different. Christmas Eve is 10 to 5, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Christmas Day is 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. The 26th is 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So just keep that in mind. And as far as I told you about the dates that when you can go um, again midweek earlier in the season. So usually late November through late December um, are when these markets are held. So I would I would go probably in late November slash very early December. I want to say we were there around December 2nd or something. I can't remember. Okay. But pretty early on in the season. Um, so it's not too crowded, especially if you go during the day. How great is that, though, for like U.S. listeners, right? Like a lot of us have off not only Thursday for Thanksgiving, but Friday. Mm-hmm. And just go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Get an extra day and... And Travel go, abroad. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's not that Thanksgiving has anything to do with the markets because that's just a U.S. holiday, but right. it just happens to be opening around that time. It's usually around the Advent season uh, when they start opening up the markets. Exactly, and so. like we're always like trying to fit in a a schedule where you can maximize your vacation days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, when you go might be dictated by if you want to go visit other markets in the area though because some of them are only open on the weekends or only certain weekends during that time but i noticed that it still is an early december so if you want to go early december fantastic time to go to colmar um if you want to go on a thursday or friday again during the day not that busy um the evenings gets a little bit more crowded but i would recommend doing most of your sightseeing and stuff during the day and then you can just kind of wander around at night and take photos and just enjoy the lights and the shows versus you know, if you want to do the eating and drinking and like shopping, do that during the day when it's not that busy. And then, yeah, enjoy the lights at night. Um, so, yeah, with that being said, do you want me to start talking about the the six Christmas markets around Colmar Hit it. to visit? Um, they are all pretty lovely and charming. The largest one is the Place des Dominicains market, Christmas market. So it's located at the Place des Dominicains. Um, it's next to the 14th century Dominican church, um, Eglise des Dominicains. Um, this is the largest market with 60 stands, uh, sells some artisan goods and delicious food. Um, they have a light show on, um, at the eve in the evenings, they have an animated light projection on the cathedral that has lots of fun little things on it. Um, whether it's snowflakes kind of swirling around and different things. Um, so that's really cool to check out at night for the light show. Um, can I ask you a question? Sure. What did you guys, um, buy here? Um, just food, food and goods here. I, yeah, I mean, I think just throughout the markets, I don't have it like specifically written down what I bought where other than I do, I will say that this market is where you can get the mug, the boot mug, or at least the mug is a boot last year. Um, and the best, there was a beautiful stand that said like, Vern showed a la ancient, you know, it's like ancient mold wine. Essentially. There was a good stand at this market that had the best mold wine that I had had. So oh, be on the okay. lookout for that. It has okay. a huge sign that says it. My dad and I went and got it one night and it was very good. Even I will say the boot mug in and of itself. Yeah. Right. That's not where you every, get the mug. yeah, not yeah. every uh, market has the boot mug. So that is very true. So this is where you're going to find the Christmas market mug um, is at this market and it is the largest market up against this church. Um, the second market is at Place Jean d'Arc. So the Joan of Arc um, square. This market is on the corner of Place Jeanne d'Arc and the Grand Rue or Grand Rue. Sorry, my French is a bit. <laughs> it's hard to go from amazing. French to English. <laughs> so amazing. Your French is a bit amazing. Oh, oh stop. Um, I, f- I always feel weird like trying to do the French pronunciations. When Why? I'm speaking English. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Both of us. It sounds like, do I sound stupid doing it? And then I get self-conscious and then it does sound stupid. (laughs) Both of us are doing French and Duolingo right now. (laughs) Catherine's French is very much French. I swear, when I get, like, when I go to France, I speak pretty decent French. Right. You (laughs) use French in France and that is what you use. Mine is like, je suis Chris. Yeah. I am Chris. You just said you have Chris. Or you have... Je suis. Je. je. Oh, no. Je is I have. And then you're like, sui is to be. Je I have sui. to be Chris. Oh, no. I, I don't know. And this is my exact point. <laughs> it makes no sense what you just said. It but doesn't. But yeah. getting back to soccer... 
know. Um, but yes, uh, the corner of Place Jean d'Arc and Grande Rue. Your we'll French give that a try. Killer. They sell local products here. Again, local food. You got that pate, that foie gras going on. Um, it's kind of got this Alsatian village flair just because you have the half-tempered buildings all around it. Um, and the, the, the booths are these cute little chalets. And it's, and it's really cute and adorably decorated. Um, but here's where you're going to find a lot of great food like pain de pice which I'll talk about more later, but it's more of a spiced gingerbread. I love uh, panda peas. And then you've got your foie gras, your wine, your sure. beer, you know, you standard. Know how, standard. The, <laughs> how casually you say you've got your foie gras, which is, by the way, canceled. Okay, not in the Alsace. Not, <laughs> not abroad. Not abroad. Okay. Um, so that's the second market. The third is Place de Lencien Duen Market. So beautiful. Okay. Um, the booths around here are around the Schwindy Fountain and close to the river. Um, and this place has decor, more wine, tasty treats, that sort of thing. So it's kind of in the central part of the of the town. It's really, uh, really easy to get to. And then next to it is the Coifus Market. And it is, um, <laughs> Coifus is Customs House, is the Customs House. Um, so it's right next to this other market. And this is known for being indoors. So it's not, it's a great place to, uh, to warm up. Um, it is inside of a 15th century customs house, hence coifus or yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, and then you are as okay. a, uh, as a, as someone on. <laughs> okay. Will you stop? Track two of Duolingo. You are saying that right. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so. They have local vendors here. So what's special here is it's a, lo a lot of local vendors selling art, um, arts and crafts, clothing, different things that are that they make. So not a food market. It is known for crafts. So if you want some decor, if you want like a new mug, if you want like, you know, some art, this is where you would get it is at this market. Do they have food or drink? I think in the basement, like we walked underneath of it and there was like a tiny bit of food, but most of it is it's almost all exclusively wares like housewares clothing art okay that sort of thing so, by locals okay so, and it's a really cute market inside you're not allowed to take photos inside either because okay. you have art and other things going on in there yeah so, that yeah. makes sense so Catherine, be shopping <laughs> all right number five is my favorite market and this is the petite venice market um so this is a this is around the place des six montagne noir so the place of six mountains or six black mountains. Um, this is surrounded by the beautiful half-tempered houses. You've got the river. You've got all the, the beautiful bridges around this area. And it's known for having light projections on the buildings along the canal. So we saw very cute light projections. It's on the weekend evening. So Friday and Saturday nights, they will put that up. And we saw like a cute Santa like on his sleigh with his reindeer going across the building. And then they have this beautiful light show happening along the canal. Um, so that's a beautiful market for that. Um, this is also a great um, place for kids because there's rides here for the kids. Um, I distinctly remember this ride where the kids ride on these like little metal horses and there's just snow blasting in their face. Hold on. <laughs> like it's hysterical. Hold on, hold on, hold fantastic. on. fantastic. Can I work this through? Yes. Yeah. They're riding on metal horses. Was, like, you know, like a... Like is a, it like a merry-go-round? Yeah, like, kind of. It's not a merry-go-round. It's like they're on these little horses, and, like, you have Santa's sleigh and, like, reindeer in the middle. Can I tell you It wasn't I'm... reindeer. It was a horse, and they're riding on it, and they just have, like, the snow machine just blasting snow in their face. Can I tell you what I'm picturing hysterical. right now? Hysterical. Okay. So, did you guys have a snowblower growing up? Uh, no. We okay. didn't get that much snow. <laughs> Do you know what a snowblower is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> My... We had a snowblower. I am imagining a snowblower and it's just like shooting snow out, right? Mm -hmm. And there's like a three. <laughs> yeah. There is a three seat merry-go-round just going on and just like ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. You were correct. <laughs> is it really? How many seats does this merry-go-round have? It was very small. It's like those tiny little kitty rides at the fair where they have so like maybe three. five things. How powerful is a snowblower? And it wasn't like, it wasn't so powerful. It wasn't like knocking them off their horse is or anything. Is it ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom or swish, swish, <laughs> anyway, swish? 
I don't know. But it was really funny watching these kids like because they were laughing about it. But they're just getting blasted in the face with this. As a kid, (laughs) can we talk about this for a second? As a kid, like the experiences that I would have as a kid versus as an adult, I would view as just like the most positive things, right? Like if I am on a horse... A oh, motorized so horse. Because they have like all that ice on their shoes. Yes. Like, Can was, you imagine very funny. getting drenched with what you think is a vapor slash snow slash ice? I don't know. All of a sudden you have a hard shell on the outside of you, but you're eight versus like an adult and you're like, this is going to take forever to go. You know what I mean? It was it was great. Um, so rides for kids, <laughs> specific, ride for kids. specifically um, the one where they ride a horse and get blasted you with snow a, in the face. You have a snowblower, you have a three seat merry go round, and you have a belt tie in the two. It was a little bit more. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't want you to paint a that, romantic picture here, <laughs> Catherine. If that's what it was, that's what it was. Oh, it was a bit more put together than that, but um, <laughs> essentially, that's what happened. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just, I'm just, I was with my dad and we were like walking around these markets that night and I was taking photos. And we were both cracking up about it. It was funny. I'm just uh, imagining like <laughs> be a kid on that, right? Like you're going around, you get hit in the face, you shake it off and you're like, this is great. And, but like you truly mean it as a kid. Yeah. Right. You're like, this is amazing. Right? Santa's coming. They seem to have a good time with it. As an adult, (laughs) you're going around, you're hitting in the face because your kid is too short in front of you that you're stabilizing on said horse. And for the home video, you're like, this is great. You can't see your face moving. Yes. Um, I love this. So, yeah. Just go for that ride specifically. Um, at night, it's even better because then it's all lit up. So you really get it lit up for you. Then the spectators <laughs> have a great time. Yeah, no, exactly. That's when we went. Um, and that's when there's more children that are, you know, really pumped to go go on this horse snow blasting machine. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. This is too much. Um, but also this beautiful market has lots of great food and crafts that you can purchase as well, like all of them. And all right, let's move on. Christopher's got the giggles now. Let's move on. After you can't see a thing, all so of now a sudden... You're, now you're going to want to wipe that snow off. <laughs> you're wearing goggles to the market. So once you've semi-dried yourself off, wiped the snow off your face, um, you can go to your last market, which is open the latest until 9 p.m., and that is Marche Gourmand. This is just a food market. And Hold so, on, hold on, hold on. You're going to go from the thrill of I'm a three-horse merry-go-round? I'm not saying you have to do this in order. You, I mean, you can't follow that up. Okay. Let me just talk about this market. Um, so this is at Place de la Cathedral. So it's next to um, the St. Martin Church. It has nine stalls selling local food and drinks from local restaurants. So it's kind of like a food fair with different restaurants, which is really fun. And this one's the one that's open till 9. Um, they have cute little cups for your wine. They have like little white glasses with Colmar Marche Gourmand on it that you can drink your wine out of. And then they have lots of local dishes from sausages and tart de flet. Um, I don't know. Tart flambe, oysters, seafood, different things. Yeah, of course. <laughs> different things that you can try there. So uh, the Marche Gourmand, that's a great place to get dinner or um, lunch. Just note that there isn't seating. Like most people typically just stand around. So um and eat it so if you if you don't want to stand and eat your eat your lunch or dinner then this probably isn't the market you want to be at but yeah, yeah go to the last one grab a horse and get blasted <laughs> in the face with snow oh my goodness gracious the, um the, that honestly is the best we, description okay we should get into what to what to eat <laughs> at the market instead of snow in your face chris where you have to get it together um Things to eat, some local foods that you're going to want to try at the Colmar Christmas Market. The first is pen de pice, and this literally just means gingerbread. So it is it is actual an actual loaf of bread with different spices like nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, that sort of thing. And it can sometimes have um, nuts or dried fruit in it. Um, it's really good with honey or butter on it. So very delicious. They have booths that are just like dedicated to loaves, selling various sized loaves of this. 
um, in different forms. And you get to try try it and buy more. And it's absolutely delicious. Already love it. Um, more savory or more sweet? Um, It's sweeter, but it's not too sweet, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, the next is tart flambe. Um, this is a thin crusted dough that either has creme fraiche or cheese on it. And it's topped with onions and lardons, which is kind of like a fatty bacon strip, American bacon strip. Um, and it can have other toppings on it too, just depending on the stand and what they offer. But that's a pretty typical, especially um, in the Alsace, that's a typical food there. Um, like I said before, foie gras, pate. Of course. What is Christmas without it? To be uh, honest really, with you. I've been doing Christmas wrong my whole life. I have as well. <laughs> um, Munster cheese. You're going to find that a lot. So not like the Munster cheese that I think us, like people in America think of. Um, this is a different type of cheese. It's a soft rind cheese, kind of similar to like a brie or camembert. It's a bit funkier, a little bit smellier, but it's very delicious. And they will usually top it on um, potatoes with like bacon and different things on it. And it's very, very good. Um then there's also what's called bredel or bredel. Um, they're just these little cookies. They can be spiced cookies as well, kind of like the gingerbread cookies. Um, they could be iced, etc. They're just like these little cookies that are sold. Um, I guess it was a tradition in the, um, the Alsace that families would bake cookies and gift them to other families and things mm. like that. So it just became a tradition. So you will see um, Stan selling these beautiful cookies. Um, and I remember buying a pack to take home. And I think I ate most of them before we got home. But I did save you some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the wrapper was beautiful. <laughs> okay. Um, also, this one's going to be hard to pronounce, but kugelhops. Um, these are little bunch-shaped cakes, uh, kind of a more of a bready cake. And then it sometimes has nuts in it or dried fruit. It can be f- topped with powdered sugar, but it's a delicious little like bready cake that you can find at the markets as well. Um, of course, there's sausages. And then um, like a lot of Christmas markets sell different kinds of sausages. And then I think this is adorable, but um, menele or men, menel, um, these are brioche shaped, like they're people shaped brioche little buns that you can eat. And they have like, sometimes they'll have like different things in them too, or they'll just be little brioches, but they're very delicious. I love brioche. It is very good. Like a sweeter bread dough. J'adore la brioche. J'adore. See, I can correct you, and then I like get on the see, microphone, and I sound terrible. It, I don't know what. Well, this see, this is why I defer to you in all things French. <laughs> okay. All right, let's talk about f- drinks because I was very impressed with the selection of different beverages at okay. these markets. Um, of course, you have your vin chaud or glühwein or mold wine, whatever the you want to call it. Um, they have it both in rouge or blanc, so red or white. You can buy at almost all the markets you can find with when it comes to vin blanc or vin. Vin chaud or vin chaud. Um, there's other mold beverages. So if you don't want alcohol or anything like that, they have mold orange juice, mold apple or mold apple juice. They have different juices that are mold with different spices. So that's really cool. You can try. Mold apple juice would be fire. Yeah. So it's also great for the kids that they can have some of that as well. Um, when you're done getting wrecked on three <laughs> horse ride, grab a mold apple juice. <laughs> um, they, of course, have chocolate chaud. So hot chocolate. Yes. I mean... That speaks for itself. France has amazing, creamy, delicious hot chocolate. So you definitely want to get that while you're there. And then some local stuff. There's eau de vie. So that's like water of life is what that means. And it is a local liquor and a digestive that they will sell at the markets. We saw stands selling just like eau de vie. There's also, again, local breweries selling local beer. Sick. Um, Awesome. I mean, you know, here in Cleveland, we have fantastic Christmas ales. Yeah. They do that over there. They have fantastic spiced beers i mean spiced they, ales yeah they how did. does it compare um very similar i mean better i would say better over I, there i will say hop and frog that can give you a run for your money when it comes to christmas ales what um, up europe yeah so very very delicious they also sold like ipas and like lots of different other types of beer too but you could get their holiday version of their beer which was interesting cool. so let me ask you this so like you said we are known for like our winter warmers or our christmas ales mm-hmm. what made theirs better spicier um, lighter i mean it wasn't i tried like a couple different breweries um, okay i would say that it, it would lean more towards hop and frog where you could actually taste the individual like you could taste the spices more yeah like a little bit spicier yeah um maybe not as sweet but like very good i, I don't know i okay. feel like you could actually tell that it was a christmas ale and not like a faint faint hint of christmas that's fair it wasn't like a booze bomb but they were like well it's a christmas ale yeah 
Okay. Here's some Christmas. Right. Um, and then, of course, you have local wineries selling their bottles of wine, but you can also purchase glass glasses of wine. You can also taste. Um, so they're known for Riesling, Gewürztraminer. That was... <laughs> Gewürztraminer? So Gewürztraminer, but in French, it's like Gewürztraminer. Okay. Um, okay. Gewürztraminer, Pinot Blanc, Cremant, uh, which is sparkling wine made like champagne, but because it's not in champagne but it is produced in France with a method traditionnel. It is called Cremant. So they have, Alsace is very well known for its Cremant. Fair enough. Um, and then of course, um, yeah, that's uh, that's what to drink at the markets. And I will say with the local beer, you could buy like a six pack if you wanted to like take it home, but you could also buy a bottle to drink or taste it there too. So that's really cool. So, you know, there was a couple of times my dad and I would get like a bottle, of, like a little bottle of beer to to drink while walking around the markets, you know, cool. instead of mold wine. So a lot of variation and different things that you could try, which was really good. Awesome. Yeah. So lots of great things to do um, at the Christmas markets. Um, I will say that if you're going around a weekend and you want to go to some of the smaller Christmas markets and you don't want to rent a car, um, the Navettes de Noël, um, that is their Christmas shuttle that leaves um, the main place where it leaves as the train station. You can get tickets there and it will drop you off at various places. And I might do a whole episode about that because we did that on Saturday while we were in Colmar. We took the Christmas shuttle to oh, cool. Kaisersberg, uh, Rickver, and uh, Rebovle. Okay. And we got to check out those smaller Christmas markets. And I will definitely do a whole episode about yeah. that. Um, so, yes. So, that's a great option to just get there early. Otherwise, um, it might be sold out because some of the markets like the Rebovle Christmas market only run like the first two weekends of of December. So cool. you, you want to make sure you, you time your time it right if that's what you want to do. But I will get into that in a whole other episode because I have a feeling I'll be doing quite a few of these as we get closer and closer to the the Christmas season with Strasbourg and and the um the day doing the Christmas the Christmas shuttle from Colmar. Awesome. Do you have any questions? I do. Um two questions. I think that both of us would agree and correct me if I'm wrong that the Cologne Christmas markets were our favorite from our trip together. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. How did Colmar compare to Cologne? Or where did it slot in, like, if you were going to rank it versus the other ones that we've um, been to and talked about on the podcast? I think it's hard to compare Colmar to Cologne because they're... Well, I mean, they have foie gras. No, I'm just saying that, like, Cologne's... I think, how big is their big market? 150 stalls? Cologne was huge. Um, yeah. The largest one here was 60 booths. So, oh, I see what you're saying. Significantly smaller. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But very festive. I mean, I think that Cologne certainly has a lot more to offer because it is bigger. It has more rides. It has the big ice skating rink, the huge one with the ice. Like, you could do the, what is that called? Curling. Curling. The, your, uh, your, your, pantomime in there yeah, was wonderful yeah. can i i'll, I'll rephrase my question bigger, yeah i'll rephrase my question um christmas spirit holiday spirit um how did it um how did it compare i would say they're pretty pretty spot on with each other that's awesome i would say Good. strasburg is probably my favorite out of holiday spirit i think so i actually no i don't know it's hard to say i would say colmar and cologne are, are pretty pretty dead on okay i mean yeah because that's half like half the reason you're going right mm -hmm. is to is to capture a little bit of that yes so i think that that is i mean more important than like how many horses there are on a ride or how many snow blowers are blasting in the face <laughs> okay. it's it's the spirit and like why you're going and that's going to lead me into my second question is um you mentioned a number of markets mm -hmm. um the most romantic market oh the petite venice Market, okay for sure because that's okay. on the canals and you know you've got it, the light projections and stuff like that so that's really pretty okay yeah followed by the um the dominican the Place de dominican market because okay. that one has like the light projections on the church and the beautiful mold wine and food and stuff awesome yeah um was there a market that you felt um lost in not literally but like you were just so engrossed in the environment that like you forgot about what existed outside the market. 
I would say the whole time in Colmar because we spent a full day exploring ah, okay. the markets. I, it, I even, this is high praise. My dad at one point that day was like, I'm not thinking of anything else back home. Like he was like, this is such a relaxing trip because I'm so focused on all the things going on around me at the markets. Because you have like, oh yeah, I also need to mention the, um, at the St. Martin Church, you can go inside and they have beautiful nativity scenes. My dad really loves nativity scenes. So he was very excited to see that. And then, um, just the markets have so much to offer. I mean, different places where you can like do wine tastings and beer tastings and, and food and cool things to look at. And it was just really neat. Um, so it really does kind of help you feel present and in the moment, I suppose, being at the markets because you really get into it. You can go straight into the um, the diorama, mm-hmm. for lack of a better phrase, yeah. but like you're in it mm-hmm. and you have completely forgotten what's outside of it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't think so. All right. No, well, this guys, sounds amazing. Oh, uh, Komar, it was beautiful. It I sounds highly, amazing. I highly recommend it. I would go back. I would love to show it to you. Um, the Alsace it, around the Christmas holidays are chef's kiss. Um, very lovely. Um, so that is Komar for the Christmas markets. Uh, let us know your thoughts. If you guys have any questions, you can always reach out to us on Twitter at WW Honeymoon, Instagram. Um, Instagram, Facebook, and threads at, at Worldwide Honeymoon or um, email cat at worldwidehoneymoon.com. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to rate and review our podcast. It takes less than a few minutes and really helps other people find us. Also, if you're enjoying this awesome free information on both the blog and podcast, when you're booking your next trip, head over to worldwidehoneymoon.com slash resources and use the links provided. We earn a small commission at no cost to you when you book through these links. And these are all brands and companies we know, love, and use, like Skyscanner for finding the best flight prices, World Nomads for the best travel insurance, TripAdvisor for hotel bookings and reviews, and even Amazon for all of your travel purchases. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Wherever you are, wherever you go, remember to make every day a worldwide honeymoon.